what are the skills you need beyond practical hands-on hacking to be a successful penetration tester or security engineer in 2024 and take your career to the next level. I'm going to give you five things that you should learn and also share some resources on how to actually go about learning them. These won't just expand your knowledge and skills, but potentially set you apart from others, putting your head in an increasingly competitive field. If you're new to the channel, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's just get started. So first up, we have the cloud and you might be thinking, well, a pen test is a pen test and I'll just deal with the cloud when I get to it. After all, it's just somebody else's computer, right? Well, whilst the goal might be similar to a traditional pen test, i.e. we want to find weaknesses and vulnerabilities and give action or remediation advice, attacking cloud environments requires knowledge of how cloud permissions work, what services are being used, their potential misconfigurations, and of course, it doesn't help that new services and changes are being pushed literally all the time. So for cloud, you're going to be spending a lot more time with APIs, and whilst you can learn a methodology to work with, you'll likely be reading a lot of documentation on the fly. And of course, there are cloud pen testing tools to help you achieve your goals, but again, that's another thing that we're going to have to get to grips with, new tools. Some of the things you'll run into a lot in the cloud are server-side request forgery, metadata endpoints, S3 permissions, and of course, credentials and keys in source code and configuration files. And if you're thinking to yourself, a lot of those things sound like web attacks rather than more traditional network attacks, then you'd be right. And so if you're a network penetration tester, it might be time to dust off those web skills. So where should you go to learn about cloud computing? Well, most major vendors have free training available. So that's a great place if you're starting from zero. And personally, I tend to learn by doing. So I have some side projects sitting in AWS. And I think unless you're starting from scratch, project-based learning is definitely the way to go. Our next skill is PowerShell, but you could also add scripting here too. The reason I want to put the argument forward for PowerShell though is because it leads to a deeper understanding of Windows, gives you access to the .NET framework, and can help you with stealth and evasion, and of course, post-exploitation. I have to admit my PowerShell skills are not particularly strong, but even a basic understanding can be really helpful during a pen test. I personally originally learned from a book called PowerShell in a month of lunches. And when I checked last week, there was an updated version published in 2022. I really liked the way it taught you not just how to write PowerShell scripts, but how to solve problems from a PowerShell perspective and also where to go and what to reference when you're stuck or if something is broken. Another real benefit of PowerShell is that once you have a reasonable grasp of it, you can start to borrow and adapt scripts to suit your needs. For example, I used to take scripts from the Empire project and use them in certain situations. This is a great way to exponentially expand your potential toolkit as a pen tester and may open up new attack paths or options that you may not have previously explored. I don't have much more to say on PowerShell other than that, so a short and sweet section, I suppose. So next up, we have the dreaded word or phrase that gets thrown around a lot, and that is soft skills. But to me, soft skills are really a measure of interacting effectively and harmoniously with other people. And particularly for technical roles, effective communication is vital. It could be explaining technical details, or it could be abstracting something to help another department understand your requirements. Soft skills do go beyond communication though. Being a good team member and collaborating effectively is often an important skill we need to master and managing projects, time and resources, whether they are your own or your teams is also very important too. So how can we improve our soft skills? Well, to begin with, we need to decide on what we really want to improve. If you're not so good at presenting or public speaking, then the Feynman technique can really help. Or if you're always jumping from task to task and fighting fires, then pick up a book on techniques to better manage your tasks and time. It comes down to finding things that you want to improve and actively doing things so that they can improve. And if you can get meaningful feedback from a colleague or a mentor, then you're going to be even more successful. I was recently watching something about soft skills and it said, hey, you can be 10 out of 10 technically, but if your communication skill is only three out of 10, how do you think people will judge you? And it's the same as a pen test. A good pen test is only ever as good as its reports. A pen test without a report is a complete waste of time. 
unfortunately. Make sure you put a little bit of time into improving your soft skills and filling in any weaknesses that you might have. All right, so now we have containers which have basically taken over the world and are now a fundamental part of modern application deployment and cloud infrastructure. They can both improve security and introduce new weaknesses into a system, so getting containers right is a key part of the development life cycle. And of course, as security engineers and pen testers, something that we also need to be familiar with. Containers provide an isolated environment for your application to run, which can be a double-edged sword. On one hand, it offers enhanced security through isolation, but on the other hand, misconfigurations can lead to significant vulnerabilities. Some common issues that we do find are container escapes, unsecured container registries, and the mishandling of sensitive data. So when it comes to pen testing in a containerized environment, you really need to understand the technology that you're working with. So maybe it's Docker, Podman, Kubernetes, whatever, but you need to understand the security best practices. And in this situation, it's often critical to inspect the container images and configurations for vulnerabilities. You also need to make sure that there's proper network segmentation and that secrets are being managed appropriately. Personally, I kind of learned Docker a little bit by doing at the start and then expanded my knowledge by doing more research or reading blog posts and documentation. And if you're looking to deepen your knowledge of containers, Diving into the architecture of containerization, understanding the orchestration within things like Kubernetes and exploring the tools in a hands-on way is definitely recommended. And personally, of course, I think hands-on experience is key. So setting up your own containerized environment and introducing misconfigurations and then trying to break it, I think is the best way to learn. I did a Docker 101 video a little while ago. And so you can check that out if you're interested and want to get started. Let's talk next about an area that's been gaining immense traction, and that is the world of cryptocurrency and blockchain security. Now, I wouldn't usually recommend this to someone who is still looking to build their fundamental skills, but if you want to get ahead or find a niche, then it's definitely worth exploring. With the increasing adoption of cryptocurrencies and the blockchain technology that powers them, understanding the security surrounding this technology is critical. So blockchain technology records transactions across many, many machines in a way that the records cannot be altered retroactively. However, this doesn't mean that they're immune to all security issues. Common threats include smart contract vulnerabilities, exchange security, wallet security, and network level attacks like the 51% attack. When pen testing in the crypto world, it's crucial to understand how blockchain actually works, the specifics of smart contracts and decentralized applications or dApps. You'll often be looking to identify vulnerabilities in dApp interfaces and ensuring the security of crypto wallets. And there is also a growing need for specialists in this field. So getting ahead now can put you at the forefront of an exciting and evolving industry. So if you're looking to dive into this space, then definitely start with the basics of blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies and explore the best practices of crypto exchanges. And you can even experiment with creating and testing your own smart contracts. And of course, keeping up to date with the latest research and development in terms of the crypto and blockchain world is important too. So that's it for this video. Once again, if you enjoyed it, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any questions, then we live stream here on the CyberMentor YouTube channel every Tuesday and Wednesday. Other than that, you can always catch us on the Discord to share ideas and to meet like-minded people. Catch you next time.